Hello, photographers. Got something kind of exciting I want to show you. One of the most amazing things about creating images as a photographer is printing them. This is a photo book and I am in love with this photo book. What I want to talk about today is how to prepare your images for printing. So let's get into that. So the first thing you need to do is figure out which form the print is going to take. Are you going to print something like a book or are you going to be printing a print, something that is specifically sized at like eight by 10 or 11 by 15 or something like that. Now, one thing I want to know before we get to this file preparation is that you want to do this on images that are edited. So your editing work should be done before you get to the printing work. And one of the things that you should be doing when you're editing your photos is editing at a screen brightness of 50% or less. This is really important because when you're editing a photo on a screen, that screen is a source that emits light and that changes your perception of how bright the image actually is. If you edit your image on a screen with full brightness, that image is going to come back to you and look dark and muddy in a print because a print is a reflective light source. It is an inert medium that doesn't emit any light. It simply reflects the light from the light sources around back to you and into your eyes. Now, once you have that set, you need to actually prep that file for print. So I'm right here in Lightroom and we're actually not doing any of the prep work here in Lightroom because as I said, you should already have your photo edited and ready to go. And what we're going to do is export this image. We're creating a copy that we're ultimately going to discard because this is just a file that we're going to use for the printing process itself. Ideally, you're going to use a TIFF or the PSD file. So the file that I have right here is a TIFF file. And what I'm going to do is go up to file and choose save to. And under the save to options, you can see it defaults here to JPEG. I want the original plus settings. Now, if you're using a raw file, you wouldn't use this process. As an example, let's go back and I'm going to switch to the raw file for this image. And if I wanted to edit this image, the option I would choose is under file, edit in Photoshop, because that's gonna take the file with all of the raw edits that have been done to it and open it up in Photoshop for us to use. Now again, I'm not using the raw file because I've done some further editing inside of Photoshop to the original raw file, ending with this fully edited TIFF file. So what I'm going to do is choose save to original plus settings, and I'm just going to dump this file on my desktop. Now we need to prepare this for the printing process. So what we're going to do is open this image up in Photoshop or your editor of choice. It can be Affinity Photo, whether it's on the desktop or the iPad, it can be Corel Paint Shop Pro, Paint.net, whatever. You need an image editor that does some basic things. It doesn't have to be super fancy. The first thing we need to do is if we're printing a print, we need to determine the size of that print. So this is something you should know going into the preparation. For the purpose of this example, let's say we want to print an eight by 10 photo. The very first thing you have to do is see what your image's aspect ratio is as it compares to that 8 by 10 aspect ratio that you want to print in. The easiest way to do that very quickly is to bring up the crop tool and change the crop tool to the print size you want to do. In Photoshop, it has some defaults, including the 4 by 5 aspect ratio. If the aspect ratio you want to print in doesn't show here, you can create your own putting in a ratio. So if you wanted to print, uh, let's say an 11 by 15, you put that in and it will show you the crop that you would end up with. And once you see if your image fits the aspect ratio you wanna print, then you can make your next decision, which is do I wanna crop the image or do I wanna add a border to the image to make it fit the aspect ratio? Either of those choices are valid for you, it doesn't matter. However, if you don't crop and you do add a border, when you put that print into a frame that is eight by 10 as an example, you will see those borders. However, if you're gonna take that print and get it framed with some matting, you can have that matting cut specifically to the image, ignoring the borders so that it looks perfect in the frame. 
With that determination made, let's actually get to the sizing of the image so we can move into the cropping or the border adding. So with that, we're just gonna exit out of the cropping tool for the time being, and we're actually going to go under the image menu and we're going to choose the image size option because we need to set the base image size and resolution for this print. And to do that, we need to change a couple of options. The very first thing you wanna do is uncheck resample. This is just our starting point. We want to make sure that the dimensions that we're working are in inches so that you can see precisely the sizes you're working with. Once you have it set to inches and you've unchecked the resample option, the first thing you want to do is change the image resolution to 300 pixels per inch. And as you do that, you'll notice the width and the height changing. Because when you're changing the image resolution, you're changing the density of pixels per unit of measure, in this case per inch. So prior to the change, the distribution was 72 pixels for every inch of image. But when you're printing smaller size prints, like eight by tens, you actually want a higher pixel density per inch because it's that pixel density that allows the human eye to see the image instead of all of the dots of ink that make up that image. And that's why we choose 300. So when we set this to 300, we get far fewer inches because we're putting far more pixels into every inch. And in this case, my native image size is 11.2 inches by 15.36 inches. Now here is where we want to recheck the resample option because we're actually going to be printing an eight by 10. So we want to make the image smaller. And at this point we do want to resample because what resampling is going to do is maintain this resolution of 300 pixels per inch. So I'm going to undo that check resample and set that width to eight inches. When we do that, we can see that the height is 10.9, which tells us we're going to either need to crop or add the border. This is something we already knew because we previewed that with the crop tool. However, when you come into a situation like this, you might start by putting the height at 10. And when you see that, you realize that the width is 7.3. This would be the print setup that we would use if we wanted to add a border to the image. We're not doing that initially, so we're going to change the width to eight. So once we hit okay, the image shrinks down because we've actually changed the size. I'm gonna hit command zero to just fill the screen with it, and then I'm gonna back it off just a hair. Now let's go back to the crop tool because we actually need to make that eight by 10 crop. So let's change that ratio to eight by 10. And what you do here is arbitrary. You have to choose how you want to crop the image. For me, it's very important to keep her shoe in the leading line of her leg up into her body. So I am going to pull the crop down. But unfortunately in doing so, you'll see that it cuts off the tops of the hearts there. That's not ideal. And that's why for me and for this image, I actually wouldn't use the cropping option. I would add border instead. So let's go back into that image resize menu. And because I undid the image size change, everything is back to where it was. So once again, I'm going to uncheck resample and put 300 pixels in here. Our measurement is already set to inches. Now I'm going to choose resample and I want to set my height to 10 inches. And in doing so, I now have a width that is too short. And that's fine because we're going to add canvas to make this exactly eight by 10 inches. And now we go under image and choose canvas size. And for canvas size, we wanna make sure that the anchor is right in the center. And when I add a canvas extension, I like to choose white, but you can choose white, black, gray, or another color if you want. And then you need to add the extension. Now we've already got the image pre-sized to where we want it. Our measurement is in inches. If it's not in inches here, change it to inches so you can see the numbers you're working with. And all I have to do is input eight here and hit okay and it adds this little border to either side of my image, ensuring that my image is exactly eight inches wide and 10 inches tall. So that when I go to make my print, this will print perfectly. Yes, the print will have those two little white strip borders on the edge, but my image will be printed exactly as I send it to the printer. And that is what's important here. Once you have done that, you need to save your image. Now, how you save your image will depend upon the printer that you are using. 
Some printing services will accept TIFF or JPEG images, and other printing services will only accept JPEGs. I personally do prefer TIFF if I can use it, but JPEGs are fine because if you're working from the original file, working from a source with no compression means that the very first time you save it as a JPEG, Yes, you do get some compression, but it's a pretty minimal amount of compression and your print is going to look amazing from that JPEG. So let's go ahead and change this to JPEG. And when you're saving it as a JPEG, you want to make sure you're saving it at maximum image quality. If you do save as TIFF, this isn't an issue because there is no compression applied to the TIFF. And then we hit OK. And once we've done that, we now have an image that is ready to be sent out for print, which is great, it's amazing. And again, printing is something that's really, really important. It's something that you need to do. Now, prints are great, but the problem with prints is that unless you have them hanging on the wall or framed somewhere, you're not actually enjoying them. They're just printed and then they're in a drawer and you're not seeing them. And that's why I love photo books because with a photo book, you can have it around, you can pick it up, you can flip through it, you can enjoy the beautiful artwork that you've created in all of its glorious printed beauty. So for the second half of this video, what I wanted to do is show you how I made this photo book and how easy ordering a photo book can be. I got this photo book from Sol Digital. They do a really wonderful job creating really premium high-end photo books. You can see it's got this really great lay flat binding so that when you open the book, you can have an image that goes across the gutter of the image and it's going to look absolutely beautiful. They have these really wonderful premium thick quality cardboard pages with amazing print quality on them. It's something that I'm really, really happy with. So here is how easy it can be to order a photo book. Like most printers, Sol Digital offers you software that you can use to design your books and layouts and things like that. So this is what the software looks like. And to start, we're going to choose a photo book and we're gonna go with a basic hardcover photo book. Within here, you have your different size options. And I really like square photo books because the photo book has a consistent format, even though the images within it don't have to fit within that format. So we're going to choose an 11 by 11 photo book. And here's where you start to get into the options where you can really customize and make this book your own. You have all kinds of different cover finishes that you can choose. You can choose if you want it to be glossy paper or matte photo paper. And you can also add a gift box option if you want. Now I like the leather black, so I've got that option chosen right here. And then we go to design. Now when you go into design, it offers you three different options. Uh, I do not like the one minute photo book layout because it takes all of the images that you choose and it basically randomly turns them into a layout. And I don't really like that it, because you don't have any control over what the end product looks like. The problem with this is you can't create the flow. As an example, down here you see this image of the red. I would want to pair that with this same image from that same photo shoot, but the software split them across two pages. And for me to move them around and rematch them, I might as well make the layout myself. So we're going to go back to article selection and discuss discard that and go back to design and you can do the do it yourself but I like the auto layout because that's an in-between. Do it yourself gives you full total 100% control over everything. Auto layout makes it easier but still gives you that entire level of control. So we choose let's glow and I like simple clean no frills because I just want my photos to shine. And I'm gonna choose 26 pages. You don't really have to worry about the number of pages because you can always add and delete pages as you need as you're designing. So we'll click select here. And now we're in the design mode. So I'm gonna leave the cover the way it is because like I said, I love that nice clean black cover. And we're gonna to go to page one and page two. And it says right here, drag a photo here or choose a layout on the right. Now. Unintuitively, the layouts in the beginning show you nothing, but that's because there's nothing on the page. So when you start by dragging in some images, this is where things start to get exciting. I'm gonna bring two images in onto this page, and the layout that it's chosen for me is actually perfect. These are square format images. I want them to be full bleed on the page, so that layout is awesome. But if I didn't care for that, I could come over here and I could choose any one of these layout options that it's showing me, and that would replace the current layout. So right now this bottom layout is selected. If I didn't want it full bleed, I could click here and you see it shrinks them down so that the full image is showing on the page. Now we'll move on to page three and four. And once again, select the images. So I want to pair this image here 
which I shot at WPPI in Las Vegas with this image here. And when I put the two of these together, this doesn't look very good at all. I don't want these full bleed. I want to show the full image on the page. So I come over here to the layout and I say, let's do this right here. Boom, shrinks them out, puts them right there the way I want them. Now maybe you want them to go edge to edge on the horizontal, but not crop them to make them edge to edge vertical. All you need to do is find the layout that supports that, this one right here, boom, edge to edge, looks great. That's how easy it is. This gives you the control to pair all of your images and make everything look amazing. Now I'm actually going to come up here and load a project so I can show you my finished cover book layout. And this is my book right here. I added this text to the title, which looks great. And then these are the pages of my photo book. And I'm just really happy with this because it only took me about 15, 20 minutes to put this whole thing together. And then I ordered it and when it showed up, it's just absolutely wonderful and amazing. Now, Sol Digital has actually been wonderful enough to provide you guys with a discount code so you can order your own photo book. If you want to use that code and save $60 on your photo book order, you can get that down in the description below. If you have any questions about printing your images, let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, tell me, what do you prefer? Do you prefer printing photo books or do you prefer prints that you hang on the wall? Let me know in the comments where I'll tell you what I prefer. And then don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. And then get out there and take some damn photos.